Freedom Day is Press for the Planet. It focuses on journalism, freedom of expression, and addressing the environmental crisis. It allows us to focus on topics such as climate change, pollution, and biodiversity, as well as helping us find solutions. Journalism is not about uh, just what he said or she said. Journalism throughout the years, um, over its practice of, of many, many uh, centuries, has done a lot to educate the world. Journalism is about uh, bringing to light the important topics and information that glues a society together. So it's not just putting any old information out there and uh, having it uh, go viral or anything like that. It is serious work that documents who we are as a people or what uh, is important to any given society. I think one thing that is vital for the public to know about journalism is that journalists operate in an industry that is very heavily regulated by law. So there are certain things that we simply cannot report. For instance, somebody has been arrested and accused of a crime. We cannot name that person or, or publish their photo until they have appeared in court and they have been charged formally with the crime. There are certain court matters when court matters are ongoing and we report on them. We are, we are limited as to what we can report because it's against the law for us to just go and report any and everything from a court matter. Also, when people make allegations on social media, uh, you'd often hear people say, and I've heard it many times throughout my career, people say, so why are they not reporting that? Somebody paying all year? Or they get money from this one or that one or the next one? And it's simply not, those things are simply not true. The law restricts what we can and cannot report. There is a threshold of evidence that we need in order for us to say, okay, this is a story that we can publish. And if you have a story where you're, where Jane Doe is making allegations against John Public and saying this and that and the other happened, but she has no proof, she has no evidence, she has nothing to back it up, no formal reports were ever made. Those are not things that we can publish. That would be against the law. The threshold has not been met and we can't, we can't publish it. So our hands are tied in that regard. Nobody's paying us off. We have no secret islands that belong to us and yachts and limousines, no. It's simply that it's against the law for us to re report on certain things. I decided to become a journalist because I always loved sports. I always had a passion for sports growing up, playing a lot of sports like cricket, football, track and field. Um, I came from a sporting family, some, some fairly good athletes in my family, so um, I was at a point in my life where I was not enjoying my jobs before I got into sports media. So when I, when I decided, when I got into sports media, I realized this was a job for me and I've been enjoying it ever since. I, um, I enjoy covering the athletes. I was, a, as I said, I was a fairly okay athlete, but I think I, I'm better off covering, covering those athletes and not embarrassing myself. Primarily because I always enjoyed writing and also because I really enjoyed meeting new people uh, throughout my experience uh, in school and also in my own personal work experience. I always found that I could never be confined behind a desk. That was something I never enjoyed. So being in journalism, I found that that gave me the opportunity to do that, to not be behind a desk, not be confined to it, and also to be able to interact with everyone and just meet new people. And that's something that I really enjoyed. <laughs> Freedom of the Press is important because it facilitates democracy one, it keeps our office holders accountable and it tells the story of you, the everyday man. Well, for me it's uh, feature stories because feature stories, they give you an in-depth look at a particular topic or issue. I particularly like feature stories uh, with a cultural slant. So that takes a look at our culture, be it uh, pan, be it carnival, uh, or rather I should say cultural events. I think these are very important because they give a beautiful insight into who we are as a people uh, in Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, so a story that has stuck with me or like impacted me was the I did a story on the business of influencing for Business Day magazine and you know as someone who grew up with social media um, it was an eye-opening experience 
for me to be able to interact with these people who were able to monetize this thing that um, someone like me grew up using for fun, you know, and to see like the business side of that and to understand more of the strategy that goes into creating content. Um, that was very eye-opening for me. And additionally to that, um, you know, like, I feel like people around me have were kind of asking, like, what do these influencers do? Do they, do they even make money? What is the point of being a content creator? And to be able to, for Newsday, <laughs> create a story or content like that to edify people on, like, why these people are important or how they make a living was very impactful. That's part of being a journalist is being able to help people using just your words. Um, there was one story I did that stands out to me every time, and it was a gentleman who was a victim of crime, and he was left paralyzed from the waist down, and he was in some particular hardship because he was the only income earner in his family, um, and it was really difficult living circumstances. And his plan was, you know, as things were happening for him in life to be able to fix up his home and to be able to provide a proper shelter for his family and unfortunately he wasn't able to do that because he was left paralyzed as a result of the crime and we actually went with him went to him interviewed him did a story on him and a few days after the story was published he actually managed to get some help um, people came to him they offered they donated wheelchairs um, government authorities state authorities came and you know, try to make his circumstances a bit more livable, a bit easier for him. And actually seeing the result of that work and being able to change somebody's life like that, I think that was the greatest, one of the greatest feelings I've ever felt while since I've been a journalist. So I have always enjoyed reading stories and telling stories. And as a digital coordinator here at Newsday, I basically get to do both. Working in digital media is very exciting. It's always changing, so it's a lot of fun being able to stay on top of the latest trends, um, keeping updated with my skills, with new technologies that are coming in digital media, to find new and unique ways to tell people's stories and to keep it exciting for our audience. So far, the best part of the job was when I wrote a story on some issues a member of the public was facing. After I wrote his story, he met me like a couple weeks after. He recognized me, I didn't even recognize him. And he told me how grateful he was for the story and that the issues were being resolved. So that reminded me of how important the press is for being a voice of the people. And yeah, that was the best part. <laughs> part of my job will have to be covering crimes against children. As we have seen recently, there have been a slate of crimes against children and covering the funeral after is also a difficult part of the job. I, I would say I characterize the change as uncertainties. There's a whole lot of uncertainties. While superficially everything has become smoother by way of technology, such as you don't have cut and paste ups in the newsroom anymore, everything is automated superficially, but the heart of mankind is characterized by a lot more uncertainty and insecurity. Um, th that's a variety of things. That's um, a whole bunch of changing value systems. I mean, some for the better, some for the worse, some very subjective, you take your pick. And then also sources of authority, traditional sources of authority have really been downplayed for whatever reason it was. If it was church scandals of child abuse or whatever, or governance, there have been so many failures of governance worldwide. And then new voices have emerged. You have the bloggers internationally, all sorts of persons. And then sometimes some of these persons, even locally, have um, been seen to be fallible, have feet of clay. So there's a whole, there's been, there has been a lot, a lot of change technologically and sociologically. And I would say the world, to Trinidad and Tobago, as being part of the world, is not necessarily in a more secure place than it was. There are less certainties, and yet, somehow, there may be 
more voices, a, a multiplicity of voices, um, you know, from which you can take your pick. And, and maybe that's a democratization of the whole thing, that everybody has a voice. Anybody can get online and, and make a, a, a viral blog or so. And, and maybe that's a democratization. But we have to, I think, ensure that we hear us when we're able somehow to process as much of this information as possible, as many of the voices, whether traditional or new voices, and somehow get to the truth and whatever it is we're considering. Uh, some of the challenges that I face as a journalist are, oh, and that, that list is very long actually, starting off with, uh, it was a serious challenge it's almost impossible to get responses at some at some points in time especially when people don't want to look bad and that's one of the biggest issues uh, that we face you know people just trying to shy away from the negative press and negative uh, negative publicity that they try to hide their faces and this goes from business uh, professionals as a re as a reporter for the business paper as well this goes from business pro uh, professionals uh people on the street uh politicians, everyone. Nobody wants to look bad and nobody wants to outwardly speak towards things that make them look bad and, make, and that's terrible. Other challenges would be as sometimes basically just getting the right information. All right. Sometimes there are a lot of different angles and different perspectives to, to every story. There are more than two sides to every story, especially in a big nation like this. Um, and getting the actual facts, getting proper information so that we can follow our true mandate, which is information, <laughs> education, and sometimes entertainment. All right, um, that is one of the biggest challenges, getting proper information. People might call it the truth, people might call it facts, but proper information to properly do our mandate is one of the biggest challenges we have.